Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. My name is Matt and this is What Matters to Matt. And on today's video, I'm very, very excited to share with you my first impressions after 140 kilometers of the Ride 17 from Saucony. All right, so of course we're gonna go over the upper, the midsole, and the outsole of the shoe. And I'm gonna tell you whether I feel like the Ride 17 has been worth my hard earned cash. But first, I think it's important to talk about what got me so excited about the Ride 17 in the first place. What had me going out rushing to the store when it first came out here in Canada and purchasing this shoe. And then we'll talk about how I've put those 140 kilometers into this shoe and how I see it fitting into my rotation moving forward. Okay, so what got me so excited about the Ride 17? Well, it's pretty simple. It was the changes to the midsole. Now, there are some other changes throughout the shoe that we're gonna go over in this review, but the midsole was the highlight. The midsole was what everybody was talking about. And that change was that they went from a standard EVA that you're gonna find in something like the Ride 15 that I have here, and also the Ride 16, the Saucony Power on midsole, that's fairly firm, fairly stiff, a little bit harsh in today's standards, even for a daily trainer, but was something that I was quite comfortable in using as a daily trainer just a, two, just two years ago when I first got this shoe. Uh, I even remember doing a video where I took this and put it up against the Saucony Endorphin Speed and I did an interval session one week in this and an interval session in the same interval session the next week in the speeds and I got very similar paces. This certainly wasn't as exciting but because of the firmness in that midsole, it did make it fairly versatile. It was a lighter shoe. I was able to run at many different paces in it, but I really couldn't take it on any recovery runs, really couldn't take it on any longer runs without feeling like I was beating up the body a little bit more than was necessary based on what was out there. So Saucony went ahead and they tried to make a change to that and they've made a change to that. And they went ahead and put in the Power Run Plus that you're gonna find in the current Triumph series. Now this is the Triumph 20. This was my, and still is my favorite running shoe of all time. And I actually did a review of this shoe where if you wanna hear somebody talk about just all the things they love about the shoe, you can go check out that video. I had over 600 miles in the shoe when I did that long-term review. I'll put a link to it up top here. And by the way, if you're not currently subscribed to my channel and you wanna go check out that video, head on over to my channel, check out some of my other videos, subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up and comment in the comment section down below, what is your favorite running shoe of all time? Now to complicate things a little bit further, this is the Triumph 20 and as mentioned, it is my favorite running shoe of all time. Why did I take the risk on the Ride 17 just because they put the Power Run Plus in that midsole when I could have went out and bought the Triumph 21 that had the same midsole and the same outsole and just had some changes in the upper to the Triumph 20. And if I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, the biggest reason why I did that is I'm a little bit of a running shoe geek and usually when I come across a shoe that I really, really like, one of the most disappointing things for me is that when I go out there and make another purchase, I'm not likely to purchase the same shoe or a very, very similar shoe just because I wanna try something different. So that brought me to taking the risk and buying the Ride 17. With that out of the way, let's go over the upper, the midsole, and the outsole of this shoe. All right, so if we start with the upper of the Ride 17, Saucony is using an engineered mesh, and I would say that it is fairly breathable. Now, they did make some design changes to the side of the shoe here in the midfoot. You're gonna see that, you can see my finger right through the holes, but that is covered up by a gusset and the tongue. And also, it is fairly breathable in the toe box. Keep in mind that it is still kind of towards the end of winter here in Canada where I've been running, so I haven't had the chance to run this in any place that's been very, very warm. But to me, it feels like it's gonna be comfortable. It doesn't feel like that's gonna be a problem. So not the most breathable shoe, but certainly breathable enough, definitely for a daily trainer. If we wanna talk a little bit more about that tongue, Saucony has put some padding in this. No more, no less than we saw in some of the previous rides, but just the right amount. I think some companies are using the tongue as a spot to shave weight. You see that in the new mock. You definitely see that in the Boston 12 that I use for some of my intervals and some of my workout runs. Now I get the Boston 12 and even the mock are more of, uh, more of workout shoes. They lean in that direction. But we're seeing that in a lot of shoes that they have really, really thin tongues. And I find that there's just the right amount of padding in the Ride 17 tongue that doesn't cause any lace bite. 
and keeps it nice and comfortable. And also with that gusset and that padding, tongue doesn't seem to migrate at all on me when I'm out there on the run. When we go a little bit further and talk about the padding back here in the heel, there is what I would consider kind of the Goldilocks amount of padding. There's not too much and not too little. It just seems to give me a really, really comfortable feeling, a really good lockdown. My foot feels nice and snug back here in the heel and it's not overly done, so it doesn't get that hot. And the other thing to mention here back in the heel is the structure. There's lots of structure back here. When I try to push on that, there's very little give whatsoever. So very sturdy back here, very good lockdown back in the heel. The other thing to mention with the lockdown is the lacing system. Sockney has changed the lacing system on this shoe. You'll see that there's these, this uh, fabric uh, woven up through here and these little loops and the, the laces are going through these loops. Now, a lot of people say they don't like it when shoe companies kind of tweak and tinker and try to get a little bit cute with their laces but I haven't had any problems with this. Uh, Nick from the Run Testers, when they did their first impressions review, he did mention that on his first run, I think it was his first run with this shoe, he tore that, uh, that tore right off, one of these high loops when he ratcheted down the shoe. He was able to do a little bit of a workaround. Not totally concerned about that, but certainly when I get my long-term review and get more miles than this, I'll come back to that and just let you know how those are working out. But overall, I would say the upper is really, really comfortable and fits my foot really, really well. And that's a common theme with pretty well every Saucony shoe that I have. So it does fit true to size. This is a men's size 13. If you have a wider foot, you may want to try this on before you actually make that purchase. And that's something, again, I can say about a lot of Saucony shoes because they're not, they don't tend to be in the, what they tend to not be the widest shoes out there. And I don't have a particularly wide foot, so that never bothers me. But overall, I was really, really happy with the upper in this. Lockdown's great. There is enough breathability and is just really, really comfortable and kind of disappears on my foot when I'm out there on the run. Now we get to move on to the star of the show. The reason why I actually purchased this shoe and the thing that everybody was talking about, I mentioned it earlier, and that is this midsole. It's not gonna go in away from the Power Run, the standard EVA moving over to the same foam, the Power Run Plus that you find in the Triumph series. And I would say right off the bat that just my scientific test here of just doing a push test, the pinch test with this shoe, I would say that the Power Run Plus in the Ride 17 is definitely firmer than what you find in the Triumph 20 and the 21. And that coupled with, there's one other thing that I wanna talk about here because it does affect the ride of the shoe and how the midsole feels is that if you look at the bottom of these, and we're not looking at the tread right now, we're looking at the width. The width of the Ride 17, it is quite a bit wider than the Triumph 20 and the Triumph 21. And especially here in the midfoot, you'll see that the Triumph 20 really does squeeze in here in the midfoot and not so much in the Ride 17. The Ride 17 is also a little bit wider here at the heel. And what that does is between the firmer foam and the, the little bit firmer foam that we have in the Power Run Plus, and the width of the shoe being quite a bit wider than the Triumph is that it is a more stable ride. It is something that's a little bit more dependable, a little bit more daily trainer-ish, but there is some things that you give up with that. It feels a little bit less energetic, feels maybe even a little bit less fun than we found in the Triumph 20, but it's kind of exactly what I was looking for in this shoe. I still think there's enough forgiveness in that midsole that you can use it for recovery runs, can use it for easy runs, you can use it on longer runs, and you do still get some energy return that will give will allow you to clip along at a steady pace and do strides and all that fun stuff, but it's a little bit more boring than what we find in the Triumph. So if I was going to uh, actually put the ride of the Ride 17 versus the ride of the Triumph, the Triumph's a little bit more fun, the Ride 17 is a little bit more dependable, uh, really something that, that I like using for a daily trainer. I don't need anything too exciting, dependable, able to clip long and log lots of miles in, which is what I get from the shoe. And in fact, uh, that long run that I did yesterday proved that to me, that I was able to just go along at a steady pace. 28 kilometers later, run was done and I felt good. I felt fine. I feel great today. So overall, really happy with that midsole. It's a really dependable daily trainer midsole. There's enough energy return. 
There's enough forgiveness. There's enough comfort there. You can log tons and tons of miles without worry. And given that I was able to get so many miles out of the Triumph 20, I also feel that this midsole is going to hold up really, really well and it's not going to go dead anytime soon. All right, so lastly, let's talk about this XT900 rubber that you're going to find on the outsole of this shoe. Now, I have taken this through a lot of junk. I'm in Canada. We've had a Canadian winter. Lots of snow, lots of ice, lots of slush, even some rain lately. So conditions haven't been perfect, and uh, it's it's fairly grippy. It's held up pretty well. It's kind of surprising. It's better than some previous Sockney shoes that I've had. Now that XT900 rubber, the one thing that I will say that it has going for it is its durability. It's not the grippy issue. It's certainly not Puma grip. It's certainly not Continental rubber, but it's very, very durable. And again, this wasn't meant to be a comparison video, but I want to keep going back to it because I think there's a lot of similarities in these shoes is that the Triumph 20 after 600 plus miles or a little bit over a thousand kilometers the rubber is holding up really really well and the other thing to note about the Triumph 20 is that I took this on a lot of crushed rock trails even some actual trails and where you have that exposed uh, power on plus midsole it really didn't get gouged up at all so that was one thing, always when I look at a shoe because a lot of surfaces that I run on are not necessarily pavement or cement, that I'm worried about that exposed midsole. But again, I feel I feel like that Power Run Plus is a, a solid midsole that is not gonna get chewed up too bad. So even though there is this big section here uh, of exposed midsole, I'm not too worried about it overall. So I would say the outsole of the shoe is not perfect. It could be a little bit more tacky, it could be a little bit more sticky, it could have a little bit better grip, but it's it's a solid outsole and it's gonna last plenty and plenty of miles to put in the shoe. One last thing I wanna mention before we get to whether I feel like the Saucony Ride 17 was worth my hard earned cash is the weight because the shoe has gained quite a bit of weight. And if that's important to you, like it is important to me, that might be something you want to consider. And if I look at the Ride 15, now I don't have the scale in front of me, but I weighed these earlier, so I'm gonna to try to go by memory. I'll certainly put a video up here just to confirm it. But I think the Ride 15 here, and these are all a size 13 that I'm comparing, but the Ride 15 was around 297 grams in a men's size 13, which is a pretty light daily trainer. The Triumph 20, which I would consider daily trainer leaning towards max cushion, was 316 grams. I might have that wrong, and I'll definitely put the ounces up here on the screen too. But I think it was around 316 grams, which still is pretty light in comparison, size 13 foot, to some other shoes out there on the market with similar stack heights and, and supposed to do similar things. The Ride 17, when I put this on the scale and found out that it was 344 grams, that's a big jump from the Ride 15, even from the Triumph 20. And what surprised me most is that I didn't really feel that out on the run. I knew it had gained some weight because I had heard it had gained some weight, but when I weighed them, found out it was that much, that kind of surprised me. So something to consider, but I will say that I don't notice that on the run. It, it feels because of that change in the midsole material, it does feel more energetic than the previous rides. So the, the weight doesn't become a problem for me, which usually isn't something I can say. The Nimbus 25, that was one of the biggest complaints that I had with that shoe. But the midsole on that shoe didn't give me the same kind of energy return that I'm getting out of the Power Run Plus that you find in this. All right, so we've talked about the upper, we've talked about the midsole, we've talked about the outsole, and I really haven't had that many bad things to say about it. I feel like I've talked all good things except for the weight. So is there anything that I would change about the Ride 17? Well, I will say that a lot of times when I'm talking about a shoe and I'm talking about a daily trainer, I bring up this idea that I don't need it to be overly exciting. I don't need it to be overly energetic. I just want something that's gonna allow me to log lots of miles and protect me and protect my body as we get further into marathon training. And the Ride 17 does that, but there is part of me that is missing the fun and excitement that I got out of the Triumph 20. But that's a little bit hard for me to judge this shoe on because as I mentioned, I do like the extra stability because the shoe does protect my hips and ankles and everything else. My joints feel a little bit better with a little bit more stability in the shoe than I was getting out of the Triumph 20. 
And in order to do that, I think it needs to be tamed down a little bit, which is what Saucony did with Ride 17. So do I feel overall like the Saucony Ride 17 was worth my hard earned cash? Absolutely. I am going to be logging tons of miles in this shoe. I had a great long run the other day, just yesterday. I've had plenty of good recovery runs in this shoe. In fact, tomorrow I've got 13 kilometers in a recovery run, easy run that I'm gonna be doing with some strides at the end. I am going to be using this shoe. It is not the shoe I'm gonna be using for my big marathon pace long runs. It is not the shoe that I'm gonna be working on those hard workouts with, but it is a shoe that I'm gonna be using for most everything else until I find another shoe that excites me as much as the Saucony Ride 17. So that is it guys, that's the end of the video. I love the Saucony Ride 17. If you like this video, you're definitely gonna to wanna to click right there and click on the 600 mile review of the Saucony Triumph 20. Subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. And that leaves me with one last question. And that question is, what matters most to you?